We are now live. Hey, everyone on our Pandia Health page. Thank you, Dr. Yen, for joining us again this Tuesday for Talk About It Tuesdays or Trending Birth Control Topics Tuesdays. Today, we are going to discuss melatonin and birth control with Dr. Sophia Yen. So this is a trending topic. And um, Dr. Sophia, let's let's just like kind of start off with what the heck is melatonin? Yeah, so melatonin is a substance that's naturally produced by your liver whenever you eat. And so it actually sets your clock and it's usually used in the past for um, jet lag, though most of us hopefully mm -hmm. aren't traveling and aren't doing jet lag right now. But it's also helpful for, they use it in the NICU, which is the neonatal ICU for preemies whose sleep schedules may be messed up with all the lights and the beeping and all that stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So I guess the real, the real question a lot of people are also asking is, is there some type of interaction that happens between taking melatonin and your birth control? And does that affect it? Because I'm guessing a lot of people are taking melatonin at the same time, you know, they're taking their birth control at night. So the good news is there is no interaction that we know of between melatonin and birth control because it's a natural substance released by your body. Um, as long as it's not revving up any kind of system that would eat the birth control up earlier. And then the only issue I would see is if you take your melatonin and knocks you out, and then you forget to take your birth control. So taking it at the same time might be the smartest thing to do. Because if you take it after the melatonin, you may forget. Or you may be asleep and you won't be able to. Ah, I see. Okay. So, so at the end of the day, does the melatonin affect your birth control at all? Or should I even be taking melatonin? You know? So, yeah. And yeah. I, it does not affect your birth control. Feel free to take melatonin with your birth control. The key thing is just how do you take melatonin in general? And the key is not mm -hmm. that it's 3 a.m., I'm rolling around, I can't fall asleep, I'm going to take my melatonin. Because <laughs> the melatonin sets your clock. So if you take it at 3 a.m., you've now set your bedtime for 3.30 because it's like 30 minutes for it to get into your system and knock you out. Um, so do mm -hmm. not take it at 3.30 a.m. Take it at half an hour before whatever you want your bedtime for. And it mm -hmm. totally works. And you only need to take two or three doses. You shouldn't need to continually take it unless mm. a, a doctor has told you to do so but it yeah. would be very unlikely. So when for you yeah. use your jet lag, you're supposed to take it at whatever bedtime you're going to country. So when I was flying to Japan on the airplane, I figured out what is 11 p.m. Japan time. And then mm -hmm. I would take it a half an hour before that. And then as soon as you arrive, you take it one more and then you're done. And then mm -hmm. I did it coming back. And I'm usually like a midnight to 3 a.m. girl in terms of going to sleep, but I was following <laughs> the instructions and so I took mm -hmm. it at 10 and every day for the next week, exactly at 1030, I'd be like, <gasps> and just what? like fall asleep. So it is crazy strong stuff. You want to get mm -hmm. three to five milligrams for an adult. And mm -hmm. I believe you have to take it sublingually. So don't like chew it and swallow it because then you just wasted it. Take it according <laughs> to whatever the instructions tell you, which is, I believe, under your tongue. Let it dissolve there, you know, kind of slowly. And yeah, again, a half an hour before you want to go to sleep. Isn't there different types of melatonin? I think there's like melatonin gummies. There's also, well, that's what I've never taken melatonin, but maybe, maybe I might take melatonin now. Um, but aren't there different types? And then also, you know, if I wanted to take it, I mean, is there, I guess a lot of other people want to know other drugs that affect your birth control. So melatonin, maybe like allergy medications during this time of the season, it's been getting a lot hotter and everyone's been getting like weird rashes. <laughs> yes, no, I had a friend that posted a weird rash and she's like, I think it's she posted Polaris. It. And I was like, no, it's not. Go, please talk to a doctor. <laughs> and it wasn't anything that was gonna kill her. It was her son and she was concerned and people were like, you should go see a doctor. And I was like, actually you could do a lot of rashes on telemed, but you, there are a lot of follow-up questions that you need, but on the topic, Melatonin mm -hmm. and birth control, totally fine. Melatonin, only take it at 
half an hour before whatever time you want to go to sleep. Do not take it at 3 a.m. unless you want your bedtime to be 3.30 a.m. And then mm-hmm. other medications that may affect your birth control during this season. Absolutely. Uh, allergy meds, but only specifically pseudoephedrine. And the reason why <laughs> is pseudoephedrine um, revs up the hormone in your liver, and then your liver will chew up your birth control faster. And again, each person mm. is different. Um, that's been my personal experience. And there's this um, hormone P450 in your liver that like conjugates stuff and like makes um, makes drugs inactive. And so for mm. me, when I take Sudafed, my body revs up the liver and it eats through birth control. And I think that happens with others as well, but each person has a different P450 with a different rev. But, you know, who knows what percentage of people are similar to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Other allergy meds like Zyrtec, um, Diphenhydramine, Cetirizine, Benadryl, or, you know, the name in generic brands, those are totally fine. The main drugs that have interaction with birth control pills are specific seizure disorder meds. And I have to look them up. I don't have them memorized. I just always check every single time to be safe. Mm -hmm. And then some psych drugs because they're seizure meds that they're using for psych. And then antibiotics, Mm -hmm. um, specifically Mm -hmm. rifampin, which isn't used that much unless you have tuberculosis. And then griseofulvin, I believe, as well, which is for like um, fungus of the head kind of stuff. And they're not used very commonly. The other antibiotics Mm -hmm. is theoretical and has Mm -hmm. not necessarily been proven, but always better safe than sorry, because if you're that special one out of a thousand, one out of a million, whose body takes the birth control, the gut bacteria gets killed by the antibiotic and then less birth control recirculates or whatever, and you end up pregnant, you're (laughs) Uh the one that's pregnant. If you're not using it for pregnancy and you're just using it for menstrual regulation or acne or even horrific periods, then you don't have to worry Mm -hmm. about it. But again, for me, every unplanned pregnancy is an emergency and a disaster if you didn't want to be pregnant. So if you are taking antibiotics and birth control um, and it's new, then you might want to consider using a backup method. And in general, I advise everybody to use a condom simply for cleanliness. It's, I think we don't discuss it enough, but it's disgusting to leak mm-hmm. semen for the next 24 hours. So. <laughs> exactly. And then also last, I guess something that came up into my head is, is there other ways besides like taking melatonin as like a pill to like help either with your your sleep habit or maybe like naturally is melatonin found places? So as I mentioned, melatonin is released by your liver when you eat. So another way to deal with jet lag (laughs) is to eat on time. Another way to mess up your body is to eat not on time. So I'm also an obesity Mm. specialist. And so the more things you can do regularly, the better your body likes it. So if you can Mm -hmm. always eat breakfast at 9 a.m., lunch at noon and dinner at six, seven, or eight, but pick one of those, not six, seven, or eight, but seven (laughs) o'clock or eight o'clock or six o'clock, whatever you like, then your body Mm -hmm. is good. So to you release natural melatonin in your body, just eat at a standard time. Don't be like one day, one o'clock lunch, one day, 6 p.m. dinner, one day, 7 p.m. dinner, 8 p.m. dinner, blah, blah, blah. Your body loves a schedule. It likes to be regular. And that's kind of like what we advocate with Pandia Health and skipping your periods and using a monophasic birth control instead of a triphasic. So that your Mm -hmm. monophasic versus triphasic is the hormone level is like this versus triphasic is this and then this and then this and then, (laughs) well, it goes that way. Sorry, I got to do the screen. (laughs) You get the idea. Three Mm -hmm. phases versus just this, uh, just smooth. Mm -hmm. And so um, Mm -hmm. any regularity that you can do. With respect, um, you brought up a really good point. Anything that is in um, GNC, you need to be careful because none of that is FDA Mm. certified. The example I give is St. John's wort. So they took a bottle of St. John's wort. It said 100 milligrams. They tested in that (laughs) same bottle, not like batches of them, but in that one Mm -hmm. bottle. They had stuff that mm-hmm. had zero milligrams and stuff that had a thousand what? milligrams in a hundred milligram labeled thing. And I'm not saying That's all crazy. companies are horrible. I'm not saying GNC is horrible. I'm <laughs> just saying there is no government thing that's auditing that. So when you get your melatonin, yeah. it's 
by somebody that has not been FDA, you know, tested. So you need to make sure that it's a trustworthy company. I would say something yeah. at Whole Foods I'd probably trust, but even then, you know, I, I don't know um, from the Western medicine, but also just from testing, yeah. there is no one testing it. So the gummy one may yeah. work, the gummy <laughs> one may not work. The liquid one might work better, it might not yeah. work. The pill one might, might not, you just have to check and trust that company. Um, England is yeah. very famous for homeopathy. So maybe a company mm -hmm. that's out of England, I would trust more. Um, but even then mm -hmm. homeopathy is a totally different topic. Yeah, no, I think a lot of my friends are super into like uh, vitamins. They're like, oh, you know, did you get your multivitamin? Did you get like your vitamin B12 complex and all of these things that you end up peeing out anyway, and you don't even really know where it's coming from. Um, but people think, especially I think when COVID-19 and everything just first started, a lot of people were saying like, ooh, you know, get some vitamins, but also not really knowing where they're coming from and then thinking it's their like, you know, cure for everything but to keep in mind that, you know, so awesome. Well, thank yeah, you. You need to be careful because mm -hmm. um, there are other companies out there that aren't. Candia Health is very privileged in that we're the only women founded, women led, but we're also the only doctor CEO. We, I'm the only mm -hmm. CEO in birth control that has taken the Hippocratic Oath. And recently um, I've noticed that some of my, the other people out there are pushing vitamins. And I was like, when was the last time you went to the doctor's office and they pushed vitamins and tried to sell them to you? It's one thing to suggest, take a multivitamin, you know, let's check your mm -hmm. vitamin D level and then I'll write you a prescription for a specific one just to bump up your vitamin D, but like to sell you something and then put a little asterisk that says not FDA approved, blah, 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 blah is kind of concerning. So um, I absolutely mm -hmm. think that a multivitamin doesn't hurt but it's much better to get your vitamins naturally eat the rainbow but i think a multivitamin is kind of like an insurance you know so just take that mm -hmm. but like is it necessary to take extra b vitamins or as you said <laughs> exactly if you have enough it's just expensive urine it's yeah bright yellow expensive urine and if you don't have the money don't waste it i see a lot of people buy protein powder at gnc you don't need it just eat yeah. some eggs or beef <laughs> jerky or some... chicken or turkey like don't yeah. eat protein powder, it's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Yen, for joining us this Tuesday. For everyone else, we're actually going to write a blog post on melatonin and birth control. If you're interested and already have a prescription for birth control, we can deliver all throughout the US. If you need a new prescription, we can write you an online doctor, you could do an online doctor's consult um, in, California, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. So if you guys are in those states, make sure uh, you guys could sign up for a doctor consult with one of our expert doctors. You know, could be Dr. Yen if you're in California, could be another one of our doctors, but make sure to check out our, our website to see the other doctors on our page. I'm also so. in Florida and Louisiana, but we have amazing <laughs> doctors from every state and just really excited to the passion and expertise of our doctors. So when you guys are checking out telemedicine, make sure they give you the first and last name of the doctor, where they got their training, and do they really know this topic? Or is this just one of a hundred things that this doctor is doing? Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Yen. Um, make, make sure also to join us. We have another live tonight at 6 p.m. It will be on Operation Period's Instagram, not our Instagram, Operation Period and you will see Dr. Ann discuss, you know, periods optional and answer some really, you know, FAQ questions on skipping your period. How does that work using birth control? So thank you. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Dr. Ann. Stay healthy. Thank you.